So you're looking for new history curriculum for your homeschool and story of the world keeps coming up and you don't want that. Or maybe you're like me and you love story of the world, but you want something different this year. But what next? What should you use instead of story of the world? Today, we'll talk about four alternatives for history. Welcome, I'm Trisha and I'm a homeschooling mom with three kids. And even with spreading the story of the world out over five years instead of four, so we can add in extra American history, the fact that we've used story of the world pretty much since the beginning means we've done a lot of it. And this year, I'm just ready for something else. And maybe you are too. So today, let's talk about a few alternatives that you might want to look into. First one, if you enjoy the story the story setup of story of the world <laughs> um, and you like the chronological events going on all over the world, then story of science might be one for you to check out. This is by Joy Hakeem, who also writes the history of us books. And she takes you through history. This, um, it starts with Aristotle in the beginning. This one is Newton at the center. That's one we've been working on this summer. And then I think the third one is called Einstein Leads the Way. It's broken down into three instead of four books like that one is, or by the story of the world. And it's written in a story way, but as the title says, it's a story of science. It's a story of history through the lens of science and mathematics. Each chapter introduces you to another person. You get to know about the person, the what their role in history was, what their role in science or math was. There are fantastic pictures throughout it. She does a really good job of connecting one person to the next, or not like to the next, but to another. So if one scientist mentored another scientist, she's going to help you make that connection. Or if one mathematician's findings led to the findings of another one, she'll make that connection for you, which I really appreciate because I'm not someone who necessarily will make those connections on my own. So she does that really well. Now, the only thing I'll say is that there are not activity lessons to go along with this, like there are with the activity guide in the story of the world. So if you are someone who really likes to add in all those other things, you're gonna need to do some light work on your own. Um, each book, I mean, you can see it's a pretty good size, this one, I don't know my chapters. This one has 40 chapters. Um, and I think the other ones are about similar. So they're similar chapter number wise to Story of the World. You could easily take one chapter a week and flesh it out to make uh, a larger curriculum for you. We have done some of that, not in a strict sense. We've added some YouTube videos, some documentaries, some picture books, type of thing to go along with different people we've read about, but in a very informal way. So if you, but so that said, if you're someone who likes having the activity guide with it all laid out for you, well, this is not going to be it. However, if you are someone who really just loves the story model, which is what my boys really um, pick up on, that that's how they learn well, then the Story of Science series might be really good. If you want to just spend this year doing this, but you don't want to spread it out over multiple years, you could easily do all three books in a year. Um, chapters are easily doable a few chapters a week. That's what we did um, back in the spring. We worked our way through the um, ancient one. Now, if you would rather do a topical approach to your school year, then maybe you wanna check out the unit studies from Moving Beyond the Page. You can buy just the history portion of this, part of their curriculum, and each one is about 20 bucks and will last you, from what I could tell, it looks like four to six weeks. For my boys, they do not love doing like worksheet type things. So there's a lot of that in moving beyond the page. And it's definitely geared for um, a student to complete more independently than a story of the world. And since it is a unit study, there are books, so you'll need to either buy those or get them from your library. For our family, 
I've decided that the, these aren't going to be a great fit. I looked at them really and considered, watched several videos, and I just decided it's it's not a great fit for us. But that's mostly because my boys, my boys hate doing like worksheet type things. I really liked the look of them though, and the materials and such. So consider it if that's not something that um, is a big uh, negative for your kids. Now, if you want something that's even more independent, where basically it's all on the child, then you might want to consider the Big History Project, but the version through Khan Academy. There is, um, this is a free program that's been put together, and I don't even know by who, honestly, but it's fantastic. But it is very much geared toward a classroom. Could you adapt it? Yes, but it's going to be a lot of work on you to do that. However, when I was reading or when I was looking at it again, I noticed that Khan Academy has it. It is a more simplified version, but much better for an independent learner in a homeschool, not in a classroom. There is a DK publishing book that goes along with um, it. So if you wanted to add in that, you can do that. I think it was, um, I think it's $40 for the hardcover and then there's a Kindle version for, I think it was 20. This I think is what we are going to use for my youngest next year because my, my son Ben, who'll be eighth grade, will do a year of US history on his own using uh, the story of us. Is that called the history of us? Is that what it's called by Joe Hakeem? I think I said story of us, but I think it's history of us. Anyway, whatever that series is, he'll do that next year for history. So for Matthew, I think I might move him to this. This program takes, like, divides history into several what they call thresholds and looks at it that way. So you are not going to get into things like the specific battles that happened here and the, the dates. It's given more of a, a big framework for history and for the history of the world that your student can then plug in information to that they learn. There are some topics where they, you know, there are points where they get into more of those details of different events occurring places, but that's not, it's not as much the theme of, theme of it. There's also science added into it as well. So yeah, I think Matthew will, I think it'll be a good fit for him next year. And the last one I'm going to recommend is one that I've only recently found, and it is from Simply Charlotte Mason. We have used their geography for my daughter when she was in middle school. Um, it was, this series was called A Visit To, and then had the different continents. And so it used Material World Book and Hungry Planet to then take a visit to different continents. It was fantastic. This history incorporates history plus that geography plus Bible. So obviously if you don't want Bible in it, Simply Charlotte Mason is not going to be a good fit because there is enough in it that when you could leave it out, but then you're cutting out pretty much a third of the curriculum. And so at that point, I'm like, well, why would I bother paying for it? If it appeals to you, great, go ahead and use it and then just cut that out if you want. But if you do want Bible in it, then I would definitely check out Simba Charlotte Mason. It is made to be that you could do it with all of your kids. So kindergarten through high school. Um, and it starts out, it's, okay, first I gotta say, this program is well laid out. It is one of the better better laid out programs, at least for my, for the way I am, that I have seen. They have a weekly overview so that you can see on Mondays, it's family time. Tuesdays, so what happens each day? Monday and Friday, there are family history times together. The rest of the week, they have it leveled out. So I think it's kindergarten to second grade, you know, those chunks all the way down or all the way through your school. So that each day, you know what, depending on what age you have, 
what they're supposed to be doing, which I absolutely love. Again, it is set up like some other story of the world that it's divided into chunks of time, which I think is, to me, that was one of the best things about story of the world because it made, helped me make connections that I had no idea were connected because of the way that I learned history in school. So I really love that. And I honestly was really drawn to this curriculum. Now, we are not using it, and I had to keep telling myself, no, you're only looking for the video, Trisha. I'm <laughs> looking out for the video, not to buy. I think that if I had found that program at the beginning, I would have, I would have been really tempted to go with it instead of going with Story of the World. I love Story of the World. I am so glad we did it. But I really like the look of that one. If you head over to the video that's on the screen right now, you'll see a video where I talk about five other history curriculum. Go check out those two and happy curriculum hunting.